guys, welcome up to Bridge. Yeah, the room's still pretty empty without you here, but we're glad you joined us today. You are just gonna need a Bible for our um, small group today, and we'll get going and watch the so-and-so show, and then we'll join together with everybody at church for our worship time with them. So, see you in a few minutes. <sighs> ah! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fuck it. You got this. You got this. Use the force. Ah. Hey. Hey. You mind if I, uh... What? Yeah, take, a, sure. take a try? Yeah, go ahead. All right. All right. Huh. Ha! You got one in. Ha! No, you got one in. Ha! It's a bad airplane, though. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. Today we have a great show in store for you. Hang on to your seats, pews, pillows, whatever you sit on while watching this show because it's going to be a good one. First up, a competition game. Who can flip their water bottle and land it the most times in a row? Go. Go. Uh. Oh, hey, I will. it looks like I won. Next thing, random Christmas carols in the summer. Hey, deck the halls with ice cream sundaes. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season Brandon. to go swimming. Fa la 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 la. You want? Yes. What are you doing? I, I was doing the, uh, the show. The show on 17 cups of Fred's fast fraps? What? No. Well, what's with the racehorse pace? Well, I, I was just trying to help you out. You know, I saw on your calendar that uh, you have a haircut appointment in 30 minutes, and I, you know, I didn't want you to be late, so. What? Oh, come on, John. Don't tell me you forgot. No, 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 no. Of course not. I just, I just, uh, I, I, I don't need to go. That was an optional, suggestive appointment, not a real one. Oh, really? Because it says here, uh, a mandatory haircut. You've got this, John. No excuses. I believe in you. What? This is your handwriting. Yo, who would write notes like that to themselves in their own calendar? I guess you. Oh. Where were we? Oh, yes, yes. Done we now are swimming goggles. John. John, you clearly need a haircut. You can't, you can't just do the show slowly in hopes of getting out of it. I'm not doing the show slowly. Are you afraid of haircuts? What? Stop doing that. Okay. Okay, fine, yes. Ah! Uh, Brandon! Help me! What? Fine! Yes, I'm scared of haircuts, okay? Are you happy now? No, I'm not. I mean, look, John, there's nothing to be scared of. I mean, the people cutting your hair know what they're doing, I and mean, they went to hair college and everything. Well, yeah, they did. And even if they cut your hair shorter than you want, it'll grow back. You shouldn't let fear ruin your beautiful hair. You think my hair is beautiful? Whoa, how long has that been up there? Only a year or two. Okay, you definitely should go to that appointment. Can we just get back to the show, please? Fears are natural, I mean, but that doesn't mean you have to live by them. And, and, and think of all the times that you've been able to overcome your fears. You, you remember that time with the ice? Hmm? Hey, I got us some water. Oh, thank you. Here you go. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Ice! 
Nice. No, no, it's good. It's good. Here. Try. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here, try it. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is refreshing. See? Y yeah, but th 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 that was ice. Mm. Oh. What about the calculators? Forty six thousand seven hundred and twenty three divided by seventeen, then distributed to twenty three different departments. <laughs> Let's see. So that's two thousand seven hundred forty eight point no! seven six four seven. What? what is that? It's a well, it's a calculator. It's a no! No! No, I can divide it into 23 too if you want. No, it's fun. It's fun. Try it. Just push push equal. I already divided by 23 there. There you go. 190. Wow! That is really fast! It's it's like mathematical magic. Come on! It's time to face another fear. Maybe. Need I remind you of the teddy bears? Bears, you are adorable, you are cuddly, and you are soft, and I will not fear thee! Oh! <laughs> yes! These are great! Oh, I love these! Oh, you're so cuddly, you bear! You bear! Oh, why was I afraid of you? Uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty brave of me. See, you can totally get a haircut. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, I can, and I will. It's already 2.52, I'm running out of time. We've got to, we've got to. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, hey. Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kel Bell. Mm, let's just stick with Kellen. Kellen it is! Well, what do you have for us today, Kellen? Well, today, I'm telling you about a very humble and incredibly brave guy named Steven. Okay, but make it quick. I've got a haircut to get to! All right. So, after Jesus came back from the dead, the church started to grow very fast. They needed someone to help take care of all of the new believers. Stephen was the person they chose. Stephen was wise, and he was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. With God's power, Stephen did amazing things for people to see. But there were some who didn't approve of him. They started telling lies about Stephen. They said he was saying things that were against the law. So Stephen was arrested and taken before the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the Jewish court system where people were judged by a group of religious leaders. They listened to all the lies spoken about Stephen and asked, is what these people are saying true? I want you to understand what was happening here because times were different back then. The stuff Stephen was being accused of was punishable by death. But instead of backing down, Stephen took a stand. He started to remind them of how God spoke to Abraham thousands of years ago, telling him to move to a new land that God promised to give him and his family. Stephen reminded them of Joseph and how even though he was sold as a slave to Egypt, God was with him and how Joseph eventually became a ruler of Egypt. He talked about Moses, who God spoke to through a burning bush, telling him to go and rescue his people from slavery, and how through many wonders and miracles, Moses led the Israelites out of slavery through the Red Sea. And Stephen reminded the Sanhedrin of how King David's son, Solomon, worked to build a temple so God would have a permanent place to live. But, Stephen said, the Most High God does not live in any houses made by human hands. 
Stephen told them their entire history, putting together the pieces, how God had been with his people since the beginning, how he had always kept his promises. Then I'm thinking Stephen probably took a deep breath <sighs> because he was getting to the most important part. He told the Sanhedrin that Jesus was the promised Messiah sent by God and that they were responsible for Jesus' death. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they became very angry. But Stephen looked up and he saw what can only be described as the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing there. Look, he said, I see heaven open. The Son of Man is standing at God's right hand. The members of the Sanhedrin didn't want to hear that. They covered their ears. They yelled at the top of their voices. They couldn't see what Stephen was seeing. They didn't know all the pieces of the puzzle. So in their anger and confusion, they ordered that Stephen be put to death. As he died, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit and don't hold this sin against them. Stephen had every reason to be afraid, but he was determined to bring honor to God in even the scariest situations. Back to you guys. Whoa, yeah. Stephen's definitely braver than me. I, I, I'm scared of a haircut. And teddy bears. Not anymore. Well, remember, Stephen wasn't brave all on his own. He was full of the Holy Spirit. God was with him the whole time. You know something? Whenever I remember that God is with me, it does make me feel more brave. It should, because God can do anything and because God knows everything. We only see a part of the puzzle, but God sees the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Kellen. I, I'm more determined than ever to get my hair cut. You want to come with me? Uh, no way. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you next time, Kellen. Yeah, thanks for the story. Bye. Bye. All right, John, to the barber with you. You bet. But first, don't start procrastinating no, again. No, no, it's not that. It, it's time for... Reveal the question! Boom! When were you scared, but kept going? My answer is right now, and... It... Whoa! Right now? I gotta run! See ya! Okay, bye! Bye! What about you? When were you scared, but kept going? Talk it over, and be inspired by each other's bravery. Until next time, I'm Brandon! Whoa. And I'm John! Go! What are you doing? I go! Go, go, go! go. And this was the so-and-so show. Bye. Ah, bears, you guys are so cool. You're so soft and you're so cuddly and you never gave up on me after all those years. You know what? Thank you so much for always sticking with me, even after I was afraid for so long. I... Ah! Oh! No, get away. Get away, no, no. No, bear! Attack the bear with the bear! Hey, welcome back to Small Group. We learned about Stephen today, and man, did he have to keep holding on to God's promises. But you know what was great? Is that in Joshua, which is in the Old Testament, um, verse, where was that? Joshua 1, 9. I should know this. I could. Um, there's a great command, because it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Stephen really held on to that promise, didn't he? Um, how does knowing who God is and that he's always with us keep us going even when we're scared? Man, that first part of this question. How does knowing who God is keep us going and help us when we're scared? Well, Number one, we have to know who God is. Now, I can tell you who God is, and Pastor Greg can tell you who God is, and Pastor Josh, and your moms, and your dads, and Miss Heather, and everybody that teaches in Bridge, but you know what? You have to figure this out for yourself. And the best way to do it is to read in, read it, the Bible, right? To find out who God is. So today, I wanna just challenge you to write this out. This is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You can make it into a bookmark, a piece of paper, put that up somewhere to remind you all week long. And then I want you to think right now, 
When was a time you were scared, but you kept going? Hmm, yeah, I know. There's, we have to think about those things because you know what? When God helps us get through something, we need to remember those things to help us go through the next thing. And I bet when you guys went home to online school, it was a little bit scary. And when you weren't allowed to leave your home, it was a little bit scary. And it was scary. It's kind of a scary time. But now that things are opening up again, we're kind of kind of starting to um, hopefully open up again. We have to remember this time and how God got us through it. Now, if you feel obliged to learn your memory verse, Galatians 6, 9, and you want to add to the big slime bucket at the end of the month, feel free to message me with your verse, Galatians 6, 9. Talk to you next week.